Let's rig a car. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I set up my car rigs uh, in Cinema 4D and import these into Unreal Engine and make a blueprint control for them. Now, this is not a dynamic car rig. If you're looking for something like that that runs on gameplay, Unreal has the chaos rig that looks like it works great. But for me, when I wanna have full control over my car animations inside Sequencer, this is how I set everything up. Now, this is gonna be part one of a four-part series where we're gonna cover this weird synth wavy driving scene that I made. And the other parts are gonna be dynamic materials, how I made this road driving system, and also how I covered this cityscape all pretty easily and hopefully painlessly. I've got this DeLorean here in Cinema 4D. Looking good, looking stylish. The main thing I want to walk through is just showing the hierarchy of how I set this thing up and how I'm using null objects and parenting to prep this thing for Unreal so it's less things that I have to deal with when I'm in there. Uh, wheels, we'll start with these first. I've got a few different things in here that I potentially may want to animate when I get in. So I'm starting with uh, this null that I called suspension, uh, front right, and this goes front right because that's the wheel that we're focusing on and there's a few other things in here that are more DeLorean specific but for the most part what you're going to want to focus on would be wheel turn and wheel speed now I've got this first null here that I colored purple so you can see it and I've got this disc out here just to kind of show you the orientation but I want to control wheel turning at this parent level and then at the child level I want to control speed this is making sure that the speed, the wheel rotation is rotating, as you can see along this axis, but it's also going to not affect what's above it. So undo all of this, zero that out. And then when I go to the parent, I want to be able to add rotation to this. And then, you know, say the wheels turn, you don't want the rotation to be out of order. So then it starts, you know, flopping around or turning in a bunch of weird ways. We don't want that. Uh, as far as parenting goes, it pretty much did the same thing for everything. On the rotation axis, let's go to, let's see, wiper right. So I've got this box on here. It's just another null object. I don't like rotating anything on the mesh itself. It, to me, when you're going to animate, it just gets ugly quickly. So I prefer to have layers of nesting in here and it just makes it a little easier and there's less surprises. But windshield wipers, because it might rain inside Unreal. And the doors. So door left, door right. I've got these on these hinges as well. So you can see everything looks like it's rigged and ready to go. Steering wheel, I don't intend on getting inside of it, but it's here. There, you can see. So just adding a bunch of parent null rotations for all of these things. And then I exported this out as FBX, which I do have opened here just so you can see it. All the controls and stuff don't show up, but you can see that the hierarchy is still imported. All right, we are in Unreal. As you can see, I've got the DeLorean imported in here. I'm gonna cover over a few steps and try not to miss anything, but I'm not gonna go through making every node and every little detail because it's just gonna make this video way too long and way too boring. So we're gonna cover this as more of a walkthrough. First thing, we've got the DeLorean file, the FBX. You could drag and drop it into the scene. However, all of that lovely structure that we put together in here is not going to work. So drag and drop, no good. We've got another video we'll post below that'll kind of go into more detail of when and why to do some of this. Since we're not gonna drag and drop, we're gonna go to File, Import into Level, go to the correct folder, and you're gonna wanna pick the FBX file and open it and we're gonna go through, I'm gonna cancel this out, but we'll just pick a folder to drop it into. And you should see this menu. Uh, again, not gonna go through all the details here, but you can see how the materials and stuff is here. And the main thing you wanna make sure that you do have done is create one blueprint asset. And that is going to then import all of your models that you can see. I've got all these meshes into the scene. And then in this blueprint, we're gonna open this up. This is the blueprint that I'm actually using to make this rig. But now, as you can see, all of this hierarchy and structure is still in here, which is great because otherwise it's gonna flatten it all out. You're gonna lose your parenting and you're gonna lose all these nulls that we put in there. So not good there. And let's start making this thing a rig. 
So step one, I've set up this branch and this is for animation. I'm gonna try to go through and show how I've got this blueprint set up as I go kind of step by step. So this is one of my variables set to final render. This is set to public and this is just a little checkbox. So by default, it's off. This is gonna allow it so I can animate in sequencer when this is off and when I check this on, uh, that means it's going to basically take all these commands that I have and run it through the event tick. So just a quick overview of this. I've got the functions that I'm going to dig into speed, turning, drift, roll and height, uh, different body controls, light controls and materials, which will be covered in a different video. But that's what I've got all following past this branch. And that means anything past this I'm planning on animating. So when I go into the event tick, I've got the same uh, same Boolean value with the same branch, but I've got it set to true. So when, when final render is checked true, it's going to fire all of these events every single frame. And that's how I'm going to be able to make these controls in the construction script animate in the event tick. So back into the construct construction script, that's step one. We've got our final render here. Uh, and one little tip that we get into with this, if this is checked on, you're gonna notice that if there's any weird things you've got left in here, nothing's gonna animate. And that's because when I animate anything inside of the uh, sequencer, it's not gonna show up. So let's start with the speed. I've created a material function. You can grab all your nodes and then right click and collapse to a function or you can make it new, but they're all sitting over here to the left. And this is just allowing me to nest all of these controls inside of here because you can see the amount of nodes that I have. It's not a ton, but it's just enough to be a real pain in the butt if I wanna change or tinker with a couple different things to then have to go back into the event graph and copy and paste it over and over and it just save some time so wheel speed i've got a few things left over in here which i'm going to quickly discuss and then delete i've already recorded this once and it didn't work so we're going through it again i've got this wheel speed function piping into the sequence i don't want to just chain these things together because it's a lot of nodes to keep tinkering with so i made the sequence added a bunch of pins and i'm just kind of branching them off this way um because that just works better for me and it keeps it a little cleaner. Initially, I was using this add relative rotation. So let's show you what I've got here. Let's pick a wheel. Let's find it over here in, all right, we'll do this one. So we've got this wheel. I've got this null, which is what I ended up using. And then I had this wheel rotation. Now I ended up having to make an extra level um, of separation with the null object. So this wheel front right, this is the null that I created in Cinema 4D. I think I had some loose artifacts in there that I didn't catch, um, but it was tripping me up a little bit. So I just made a static mesh component, which you can go to add static mesh. And this has nothing to it by default. So it serves as a null object. However, in order to get these pieces, these static meshes to parent underneath this, I needed another static mesh. So that was just kind of one more degree of separation that I had. Uh, back in the wheel speed function, I grabbed this piece, dropped it in. So you can see there's our null there. And then from this point, I went and did a branch off. So the first thing I tried was add relative rotation. You don't want to do this with sequencer because when we get over to the event tick, it's going to add each value every frame. So say you want this to rotate 20 degrees over one second. It's gonna rotate 20 degrees the first frame and then like 40 and 60 and you know, it's just gonna keep amplifying. So after one second, it's gonna just be spinning insanely fast. So we don't want add, what we do want is set relative rotation. I'm gonna get rid of this other one because I don't need that. So your final setup should look more like this. So to get this, you could either right click and then set relative rotation. You can see there's a lot of options here and sometimes it doesn't even show up. Oops. And some of that is because context sensitive is checked. Now this is great because it filters out a lot of what you can do, but sometimes it can make trying to find what you want the wrong thing or make it difficult. So if we drag off here and do it, now we can do set relative rotation. And you can see by pulling off of this node, this filters out everything that's actually 
able to work with this node and this object. So we want set relative rotation and that will create this pin. At this point, you can see this is green with three pins and this is not. This is all being shown as one value. Now you could pull this out and then promote it to a variable, but I right clicked on it, split struct pin, and now you've got it set up where you can add variables to each one, uh, which just gives you a bit more control in this circumstance. So I then created a variable. All my variables are over here. Expand this up so you can see. Functions here, variables down here, they're all public. And each one I made sure that exposed to cinematics is checked. Now, one quick side note before I dig too much in here. The other thing you need to make sure in this blueprint as a whole is if you go into class settings, run construction script and sequencer. If you don't check this, any animations you do in construction script will not translate. Side note. And as you can see, all of my uh, variables that I'm using here are floats. So I'm really just going to kind of couple a few of these, but you can quickly start to see that I'm pretty much just doing the same thing over and over. So this speed value, you can either go over here and create a new variable this way, and you can make it public and rename it and set it, or delete it. The easiest thing to do is if you're not quite sure what kind of data you need or whatever, if you just drag off of this pin and promote to variable, it'll make a new one down here and it'll give you the exact one that you need. So it's almost like working backwards is a lot easier to problem solve than trying to go from left to right, which is what took me a little bit to figure out. And there you have it. At this point, we've got this variable that I'm going to show you. We can, we can compile this. We can go into our level sequence add level sequence, levels, this is our one, we're using car rig one as our scene. And now we can test this. So let's bring our blueprint in, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and now you're gonna see that I've put these into categories that you can do in the blueprint just by, uh, yeah. And let's start with our driving. So speed is the first one that we covered because it's set rotation. Whatever I plug in this value to, it's going to set the rotation of this mesh. So if I set this to a thousand, the rotation's at a thousand. This is helpful because whatever you keyframe in here is exactly what you're gonna get on the output. It's not doing any additional things. So say let's, I'm going to right click, set this to linear. We'll go ahead half a second and let's set it to 20. Now you can see that this is rotating. And the thing I always do after this is because you could set your final rotation, your final rotation to some huge number, but instead I like to right click, go to first curve channels, post infinity and set this to linear. Now, whatever this value is, it's just going to continue. So every 15 frames, it's 20, it's moving nice and slow. I can crank this up to, let's say, 200, 10 times the speed, and now you can see that this just goes. Um, you can keyframe it, slow it down if you want, but I like to just, if it's just constant, this is what all I need it to do. Let's go back into our blueprint. I have set the speed for this one wheel. And really at this point, it's just a matter of going through and selecting every other wheel that's in this, and we're just going to rinse and repeat. So find this one. This null is what I'm using, but if you set it up right, like I didn't, you should be able to grab whatever your parent object is. And then we come back into our function, drag that in, and again, you can just go through and start copy and pasting this whole thing down. Um, which to clean this up so it's less confusing, will end up looking like this. So I have front left, front right right side because I ended up flipping these wheels around in Cinema 4D are reversed, which is fine. The only thing I needed to do is that, I'll demonstrate this really quick. This is how it's set up by default. And it's really just gonna make your wheels spin backwards and it's an easy fix by doing this multiply. So now as you can see, the right side, this is spinning backwards because I unchecked it. So if I go to the other side, you can see we're driving these are both going forwards, that's fine. 
nice and simple to fix this um, as you just watched me undo it is just add this multiply so you can come down here mult multiply which is this exact pin I just did minus one to invert it and then we plug that right in and then I did the exact same thing for the other uh, right side or passenger side depending on where you're living I guess and then recompile this whole thing and now this one variable for speed is driving all four wheels so I can speed this whole thing up and down inside sequencer and it's driving which is great and if you want to test this as you go I've got all of these controls now that are over here so for driving you can see that I've animated speed and this is just constantly increasing its rotation and I've got everything else set up in here too that I can go through and test by plugging in these values so I set up turning and that parenting makes uh, matters because now you can see when I turn these wheels the speed is still intact it's not like flipping all over and doing something that's physically impossible and you can keyframe like this you can drag this inside um, and expose these values down here like I've got here but this is pretty much it I went through and Obviously that's a bit too much try five but I added in some controls to do a little bit of uh, you know pitch roll if I wanted to simulate this thing going over bumps or doing whatever or just happily bouncing along because that's the thing um, I've added in these controls and it's really just about the same thing so go back to this event for graph turning I did the exact same thing select the uh, object that you want drag it in set relative rotation and have your variable set up to it so you can see this setup is exactly the same as the speed the only thing i had to modify on the fly was this other set relative rotation that i put in front of it and what this is saying is we pick our wheel and the values of this were kind of strange uh, something was off in cinema I'm pretty sure it was see these are all zeroed out and I'm pretty sure this came in like this the wheel turn had some funky thing that I didn't zero out if you zero it out you shouldn't have that problem but I didn't so I just set this relative rotation first and I forced it 90 degrees it pretty much got this to orient exactly what I want it's pretty much brute force the rotation into place and now I'm setting the relative rotation again on top of that. So that allowed it to do what I needed it to do without having to go back and keep re-importing and doing it the correct way. Uh, so yeah, just kind of keep going with this. I set up drift as well, um, which apparently I did not use the roll and height or the drift in my animation, but these are set to add still. Should have made these set relative rotation like the other ones. Uh, and I didn't even bother putting these inside a function because they were very similar. I copied and pasted this whole thing and it was pretty simple. But now out in here, you can see that I have drift. And this is just rotating pretty much at a parent level. So when I run this along the spline, if I want this to spin all over the place, it's not locked to the spline. There's one more degree of separation between the vehicle and uh, the spline attachment point, which I will show you in a later video. And last couple things before I wrap this up. Body controls, this function, walk through the same thing. Again, another sequence, another uh, add rotation, which all these need to be changed on my end to set uh, but it's a simple node fix and I realized all this after I was sending out renders but I didn't end up using half of this for the animation that I did but same thing over and over and over just keep doing it um, light controls this is probably the only one that's a little different but same setup light visible I made another uh, variable down here for and I drop these into this control but I wanted to set the visibility so I made two rectangular lights that as you can see here these cast out light I can now over here into these material controls toggle on light visible or not visible so if you want to see it yeah something like that but I can toggle this on and off in this section 
And then from there, I just keep adding parameters to it. So set intensity, I've got this controlled off of another variable so I can access all of it over here with intensity and set light color. That is why this thing, ah, the default set to black. Probably shouldn't do that if you wanna see light. Um, and then set color. And for this, the value ended up being a linear color. I didn't know that at first. I just drug off of this and promoted it to a variable and I didn't have to go through and guess out of all the thousand variable classes that are in Unreal. There we go, now they're working. So uh, I can now control these on per instance basis. They're attached to the, you know, the DeLorean, we, and I can turn these on and off. So I have all these controls here that you don't have to dig inside of the blueprint. Um, I can access this if I want to duplicate this blueprint over and over. They're all independent, which just makes this such a more powerful thing to keep working with instead of having to dive in and doing a bunch of variations, which sucks. And material controls to do later. So this is my general setup. When you get all this set up in your construction script, just make sure that you copy and paste it all over past your branch in the event graph, and you can toggle on your final render here so you can see now everything turns off that's because it's running it through the event tick and because we're not rendering it's not showing up and this will all animate now in the movie render queue hope it covered it all thanks for watching i hope you found this video helpful if you did like subscribe drop comments in below helps us out all that stuff and uh, keep on the lookout for the next one where we cover more on how to build this out